I should be doing some tech course instead of watching TV. Alphabet is the latest tech giant to slash its workforce, announcing cuts today of 6%. In an email to employees, the company's CEO said it had hired for a different economic reality than the one we face today. Google, with 12,000 employees cut, joins other tech big layoffs? companies that- Tech layoffs? Inflation? War? If you've been paying any attention to the news headlines lately, you're probably feeling this way as well. Jeez, is now even a good time to be thinking about a tech job? They make everything sound worse than it actually is because fear sells. They love to offer you a solution to fear, which usually involves you buying more stuff. There's actually a shortage of tech workers and companies are scrambling trying to find the right people. I'm gonna show you the top tech skills you need and I'm gonna give you three life-changing ideas that will future-proof your career. I'm also gonna to prove to you that the best time to get new job skills is when things seem uncertain. If you just wanna dive into the tech skills, jump directly to that chapter. If you really wanna understand where we're going, you first need to look at where we've been. You see, job demand is directly related to the health of the economy. That means that demand for workers like you is cyclical. It ebbs and it flows. To get a better look at these cycles, it's helpful for us to look at them at their extremes. These are called boom and bust cycles. When the economy is booming, people are having a good time. They're partying, the drinks are flowing, investors are making money, and there's more jobs than there are people to work them which means salaries are going up. When the economy goes bust, investors lose money, people lose their jobs, spending goes down, fear and sadness go up. Over the last 100 years, our global economy has experienced some major boom and bust cycles. The most famous being the Roaring Twenties, a period characterized by fast economic growth, industrialization, consumerism, and stock market speculation. Translation? People were getting rich. But then the stock market crashed in 1929, starting the Great Depression, which lasted throughout the 1930s. And then there was the post-World War II economic boom. The US and Western Europe experienced significant economic growth driven by post-war reconstruction. But in the 1970s, rising oil prices led to a bust which created high inflation and unemployment. A more recent boom was the housing bubble of the mid 2000s. Real estate prices surged in the US and other countries. Financial institutions got greedy and a bit sloppy. Predatory lending that disproportionately took advantage of black and brown people. And of course, we all know how that went. The housing market collapse in 2008 led to the global financial crisis, which led to a massive recession. More recently, the COVID-19 pandemic forced governments worldwide to provide stimulus packages, which eventually led to much of the inflation that we're experiencing now. The moral of this story is that things always improve. Things always go from bad to good, bad to good. Typically, the economy comes back and when it comes back, it comes back so strong that people forgot that they were ever even worried. That's not always the case with new disruptive technologies. New technologies have always threatened job security. Before the PC, many documents were typed manually by typists. With word processing software and data entry automation, many of these roles just disappeared. The same is true for telephone switchboard operators and travel agents. When was the last time you used one of those? With the emergence of the internet, people stopped sending mail. This reduced the amount of postal workers that were needed. If you had a job in print advertising or working in newspapers, these roles also steadily declined. Now, we're facing a fresh wave of job security fears as we see new technologies rising. There's fears of AI bias and loss of control over intelligent systems. Self-driving cars and trucks will likely displace drivers. Robotics and advanced automation will certainly drive job loss. Our society will need to learn how to balance our desire for innovation and technological progress with the risk and uncertainties that it actually brings to society. For those with a growth mindset committed to continuous learning and those who are resilient, these problems are all opportunities. What are the skills you need to learn for 2025 and beyond? It helps if we examine the technological trends of today to better understand what skills you need for where things are going to 
tomorrow. Let's explore three trends related to artificial intelligence. You're hearing all about ChatGPT and similar types of AI. This doesn't really tell us much about what's going on. Let's start with generative AI because it's the one that's the most popular and the one that you've probably the most familiar with. Generative AI creates new content, often for entertainment. Think of AI generated art or AI generated music that created that killer Drake song. I came with my ex like Selena, the Applied AI, on the other hand, is AI that's being used to solve real world specific problems like diagnosing diseases, predicting financial trends, or improving customer service. Generative AI and applied AI is where the car is designed. Machine learning ops would be the manufacturing plants that pump out the cars and get them on the road. Think of it this way. If you had a bakery and you were the only baker, you could easily bake lots of nice desserts for your friends and family. Now imagine someone asked you to supply every Walmart in Houston, Texas with your baked goods. Without the scalable systems, processes, and people to help you, you'd be too overwhelmed to pull it off. It's the same situation for deploying machine learning and AI solutions. Creating a small proof of concept application that can run on your computer at home is relatively simple. Deploying something like GPT-3 globally and handling millions of requests requires machine learning ops. The skills you need to acquire are machine learning, data science, and natural language processing. Python is the programming language of choice, so get started learning that now. Machine learning is multidisciplinary, so you'll need a good grasp of math and statistics, and you'll need to understand various machine learning algorithms. For data science, you'll wanna learn how to manipulate data and different methods for visualizing data. The next macro trends we're seeing all have to do with digital services. That includes next generation software development, digital identity, and Web3. There's a bit here, so let's break it down. Let's start with next generation software development. If you're not terribly familiar with the current ways of doing software development, then don't worry so much about that. But just know that companies that invest in digital products and services are pretty excited about this, and their hiring has increased. Developing and maintaining software is incredibly expensive. Software developers who use no code and low code tools that simplify and automate the software development process create efficiencies and reduce overall costs. For programming, focus on Java and Python. Learn about DevOps and Amazon Web Services. Digital trust technologies help manage data and keep your information private. Like when a website annoys you and keeps asking you to sign up for two-factor authentication? Yeah, that's digital identity. Some skills you want to learn are computer security and identity management. You've likely heard of Web3. These are technologies that aim to decentralize the internet, such as cryptocurrencies and other innovations that use blockchain and risk analysis. When you hear Web3, think about technologies like cryptocurrencies and other innovations that use blockchain. You'll wanna learn blockchain and risk analysis. The final macro trend is digital connectivity. Advanced connectivity like low earth orbit and private 5G networks support connectivity between IoT devices. You need skills in network engineering and IoT. Immersive reality technologies, just think metaverse. This is a combination of virtual and augmented reality solutions that are on the bleeding edge of innovation. If you're not necessarily technical, this trend is perfect for product design and user experience skill sets. You'll want to learn 3D modeling as well. The final trend is cloud and edge computing, which is how companies store information in various locations to deliver the right information to you in the shortest amount of time. The skills you'll need are cloud computing and Microsoft Azure. So, those skills are great. If you commit to learning the skills that I mentioned, there will be job demand for you. Like we discussed earlier, the economy ebbs and flows. The demand for these skills will change. If you really want to future-proof your career, you need to get good at these evergreen skills. It's the evergreen skills that will set you apart. Read the book Growth Mindset by Carol Dweck. A growth mindset is the belief that your abilities and intelligence can be developed through dedication, hard work, and learning. It's the understanding that challenges and failures are opportunities for growth and learning. Continuous learning is an ongoing process for acquiring new knowledge, skills, and insights throughout one's life. It involves a commitment to self-improvement and personal growth. If you're going into tech, you'll wanna make sure you make a personal commitment to continuous learning. And you'll need to develop strong resilient skills. It's the ability to bounce back from failure, challenges, or setbacks, demonstrating emotional strength and adaptability. You need resilience to get through the learning process and job searching. I've included links in this video to some courses that can help you gain these skills. If you want help or support in your tech learning journey, subscribe to the channel. I'll be bringing you more content that can help you shift to tech. You can try to save